So here we are back again. Now you'll notice that oh goody, Hyde failed versus Wyverns. This could be interesting. Um, see if I can outrun him. Doesn't look like I can. Nope. So what I can do, however, is use an improved Tanglefoot bag and run away. But I'm actually just going to fight them because they're uh, they're just going to be here when I get back. So I need to get rid of them anyways. Uh, I can't pay them off, and having a druid doesn't work because they're not normal mon they're not normal animals. So I'll fight them off screen and be right back. So we're back, and this is the Mines of Selgol. You'll notice that um, when I get quests, I make an effort to go to the area before I learn about the quest. Otherwise, the person tells you where the area is, and you don't get the 100 XP for discovering it. It's not a big deal, but it also just sort of shortens things. So uh, we'll head in. So this is kind of a long area, actually. It's the first long internal area we've dealt with. Uh, so I don't want to really buff up a lot and waste all my spells at first. So mostly I'm just going to summon the animal companion and, you know, cast the songs and, you know, something basic stuff like bless just to get through the, the first part here. But there is a bit of sort of endurance required in this. You could buff up more heavily if you wanted to. Now you can see there are a couple fire newts in here. Um, and uh, so the uh, flaming weapon is not going to be very useful. They don't actually do that much fire damage, but one of the things that would have been nice is if the favorite soul had been tanking because he has automatic fire resistance. And again, you'll see that, that there's a reason I have picked this kind of party setup. Because normally I'd, I'd end up with stuck in a choke point like this, and I'd have only one character actually fighting, which would not work out that well. But since I have lots of archers, I can just sort of shoot from behind. And I might give her a little more healing. The one thing to be careful about with archers is that they tend to move to a position where they can start shooting and then start shooting without moving any further. Um, which sounds fine, but usually the position where they can first start shooting is right in the middle of a doorway. So they can kind of block up your party if you uh, aren't careful. Oh, hey, I didn't realize we had friends back here. Since Sharmal lasts a long time, I'll just bring him into the fight. Sharmal.
Alright, well, let's heal up. You'll notice I unsummoned my animal companion. It really was just getting lost and not following up, so it wasn't much point in leaving it out. You can just summon it, into, summon it into the fight rather than trying to drag it along, since you can just unsummon and resummon it constantly. So I'm going to heal up, be right back. Alright, we're back. And behind this door up here is the, sort of the hard fight of the area. This is sort of an annoying place for a fight, because again, you're stuck in a narrow hallway with an opening, and there are a lot of enemies on the far side. So you want to either get your entire party through the, the door, or you want to have them come to you, because you don't want to have just begin to be stuck at that choke point and not be able to fight enemies because you can't get to them. So I'm going to have everybody else just hold positions, um, and I'm going to buff up, and I'll be right back. So here we go. I'll open the door, and there are all our good friends. And I'm actually going to cast a lower level summon at them just to get the fight started. And then run back through the door and start fighting them here. And our little guy didn't last very long, but that's okay. Well, so much for Sharmal, but he got most of his big spells off, so... Make sure everybody's using their rapid shot mode. And that's everybody. So, we'll be back. Uh, I'm going to clean up, and I'll see you back on the world map. So, here we are back on the map. Um, just to go through some of the more interesting treasures, uh, there's this snake tongue amulet, which came off the, the boss guy, as well as a great axe of flame, which is for Vidinia's quest heavy weaponry. Just generic suit of magical chainmail, which is actually better than the armor Napro is wearing. Uh, a light crossbow plus one. Uh, it's probably worth noting that with all of the characters I have, um, they almost all have weapon-focused longbow. But since we're using non-magical longbows, a uh, light crossbow plus one is better. And the thing with light crossbow plus one is that unlike the previous games um, with you know the or original official campaign and Mask of the Betrayer, um, bows can just have enhancement bonus instead of just an accuracy bonus like they did. So it gives plus one to hit and damage. So that's just a better weapon, even though we have focus in longbow, than a longbow. Now, the pr only problem with that is that once the character gets over a base attack bonus of five and starts getting multiple attacks, they can't get multiple attacks with a crossbow. You can only get one shot around with a crossbow unless you take a specific feat. So I am not going to use that. Uh, for long, but I will use it in the short term. There's also this lens of detection, which casts fine traps three times a day. I've got enough search that it's not a big deal, and a light hammer plus one. Another thing that they added, which was missing in the original game, was uh, alchemical silver, cold iron, and adamantine uh, ammunition, so that you can actually use bows against enemies that are immune to uh, normal weapons. But that's, you know, pretty much it. The, those alchemical silver bolts I'm just going to sell because there's not any need for them in the near future. So, we're off. I don't actually have very many bolts, which is one of the only problems with using it, so I'll have to buy some more of those. Head back into Torek and we'll go into the tavern because the quest for Torek was to clean out the mines and we've cleaned out the mines, so let's go claim our reward.
So, um, it, this is the, the tutorial talking about the salt. Um, rare resource, yeah, you know, you can make a slight profit by buying and selling them, but I don't have enough trade bars to really get take advantage of that, and it, it's not really very efficient. I mean, it's easier to just kill enemies to get, you know, for monster parts for gold if you really were desperate for money and didn't have any areas left to work in or something. So uh, I'm going to ignore them. You do need them later for for another quest, but you only need one, and we have to come back to Samargal anyways. So uh, we'll just wait on that. I'm going to level up off screen, and then I will start next uh, the next episode with everybody at level 7 ready to start the Yuan-Ti Temple, which is not the easiest of areas. So we're actually going to head all the way back to Samargol. Now there's again a little side area here, um, but the enemies here are well, they're sort of interesting in that they uh, the shadows, which do strength damage. Ah, what the heck, we'll do it. Um, I'm not going to do it in this video, though, because it, it will take a little while to go through them. Because, again, they have concealment, so this will be kind of a slow fight. But we'll see you next time.